In this video, let me show you a quick and easy tip to improve reflections in your landscape images using a little bit of Lightroom. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. As always, I will be going through the whole editing process. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video. But first, let's do the basic adjustments. I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This gives me a little more control over the contrast and I just prefer it this way for this image. Now, the first thing we will notice is the white balance is off. You can see a super heavy blue color cast. I do like the blue tone, but it's still too strong for my taste. We have a few options here. You could go into the white balance drop down menu and choose the auto setting. This will give you a pretty natural looking white balance. However, what I want to do is I want to simply raise the temperature a little bit, keeping most of the blue tones, but making it a little more neutral. So I want to go with something like this. I'm quite happy with how this is looking. We still have blues in most of the image, but the foliage of the trees now looks way more natural. With the white balance out of the way, the next step would be to adjust the exposure. Looking at this histogram, you can see it's more on in the darker side. That's okay for this image because we don't have any direct sunlight. It was a quite dark gray morning. So we want to kind of keep the mood. Still, I want to raise the exposure very gently. And I also want to bring up the whites. I'm doing this to kind of spread the histogram a little more. This will add contrast to the image. And as I mentioned earlier, because we changed the profile, we have more control over the contrast ourselves. And that's the reason for me to just introduce some contrast back manually this way. So I'm going quite high with the whites. This in turn will kind of blow out the sky. We are losing details in here. So I'm going to fix that by bringing down the highlights a little bit until we can see those clouds a little better. Just like this, perfect. Now we can add back more contrast by bringing down the shadows. Just pay close attention to the histogram because of course we don't want to underexpose anything. At this point, the shadows do look good. We don't have underexposure. Still, I want to slightly raise the blacks. And what this does is it kind of makes the whole image a little bit softer. Since we're making the darkest parts of the image brighter, and we are effectively reducing contrast in this area, which creates the soft look. And I really, really like this effect. Then I want to add texture, which will just basically sharpen the image. At the same time, I'm going to drop the clarity, which again helps for the soft look of everything. And for the same effect, I'm going to drop the dehaze. All right. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance a little bit because we want this image to be a little more saturated. Wonderful. So that is the image after the basic adjustments. We can compare to before real quick and you can see it looks much, much better. We do have a lot more detail in the dark areas. And of course, the white balance looks really, really good now. But what about the reflection? Here, not much has changed. To make the reflection pop, of course, we only want to target the reflection. And how do we do that? Of course, with masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And working with reflections like this, since you have a very defined area, this means we can simply use a linear gradient. And with that linear gradient, we are going to target all of that water surface like this. The only thing that might be a problem is the edge of the linear gradient right here. Depending on how the edge between water surface and the landscape in the back is looking, you want to either have a sharp edge or a softer edge, like in this case. That's pretty much up to you. But I think having a little bit of a softer edge like this has a better effect on this image. Now, what I am doing to make reflections like this pop is I'm always going down into the effects panel. And here we can simply pull up the clarity slider and watch what will happen. As I pull it up, you can see the reflection becoming way, way stronger, which always looks great. Of course, we don't want to overdo it, but we can use pretty high amounts of clarity in this case. I'm going to reduce it back down a little bit, but I want to have a visible clarity effect on that reflection. 
we can further make things interesting by introducing some more sharpness by increasing the texture slider. And again, I'm going to use quite high amounts of texture. Something I would never use globally, but in this case, on this particular area, it's totally fine to use higher amounts of texture and clarity. With just these two adjustments, we made the reflection look way stronger. This is the image without the masking, and here we have the image with the masking applied. And that's basically 99% of this editing tutorial, but of course we can improve it a little further. For my images, what I read a lot is, the reflection is way too bright, it's brighter than the upper part and it looks unnatural. So I personally don't have a problem with that, but if you want to keep it natural, you want to make sure the reflection is darker than the upper half of the image. So how can we do that? We can increase the contrast a little bit, which will just give the reflection more punch and it will also kind of make it a little darker. But we could also slightly bring down the shadows. So let's bring it down a little further here, just like that, making everything look a little darker. This is pretty good. But we can do something else. We can make use of a second linear gradient and I'm going to drag it up from the very bottom part like this. And what I want to do in this area is to simply make it darker in general. So I'm going to bring down the exposure just a little bit. Wonderful. We could even add some more contrast in this particular spot. So let's raise the contrast. All right, that looks great. Again, let's take a look comparing the image from before without the masking adjustments to after. That looks really nice. Now, if you want to make the reflection even stronger, you can do that using a third linear gradient. I'm going to target the back of the water surface like this without changing the foreground. So that means we need to subtract choosing a linear gradient and we're going to get rid of the foreground just like this. Now we only have the upper part of the water selected. And what I'm going to do in here is to just add some more clarity again. Again, I'm using quite high amounts, but for areas like this, it looks really, really good. And again, I'm also going to add a little bit of contrast. Wonderful. At this point, we might run into some issues with brighter areas, like the fog lingering above the forest right here. This is looking a bit too bright, so we want to use a radial gradient for targeted adjustments. Create one right around this particular area. We want to make the bright fog darker without affecting the shadows. So we can do that by bringing down the highlights, which will mostly affect the fog, and we can bring down the whites, just like this. And now it looks way more natural than before. Okay, and that is how you can improve reflections in Lightroom with a little bit of masking. So let me show you the image once more before, after. Beautiful. Now, of course, I'm going to show you the whole editing process for this image. So we're not done with the masking yet. Let me continue with a sky selection. And I don't want to affect the whole sky. I'm again choosing to subtract a linear gradient. And let's bring it up like this. I pretty much only want to, uh, want to select the top part of the sky like this. And what I want to do in here is to add some kind of vignetting effect to guide the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. So I want to make the top part darker by bringing down the exposure very, very gently. Again, we don't want to overdo it. And I'm also going to bring down the blacks, which will affect the darkest clouds. Perfect. I do want to work on this effect a little more. So let's create one more linear gradient. And I will be covering most of the right side like this. I do overlap the landscape a bit. I think that's okay. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure very, very gently to add this dark effect. Wonderful. And I want to add more structure to the clouds and therefore we can use a sky selection. And with the sky selected, it doesn't need to be super precise. So just like this is fine. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity to bring out the structure of the clouds. Perfect. I might even add a little bit of glow. So let me use a radial gradient. We'll be placing this radial gradient over the brightest spots of the sky. 
overlapping some things in the foreground like the mountain and actually let me right away add another radial gradient to this mask on the other side right around here let's rotate it a bit and place it right here now to add the glow effect i'm simply going to pull up the blacks i think this looks great i don't think i need to make it stronger so let's leave it at that and finally i also want to target the greens of the image so for that let us use a color range mask and i'm going to click right in that bright green spot and foliage of the tree this is giving us pretty narrow selection so i'm going to bring up the refine slider a bit that's looking much better now i don't want to affect the reflection because that would again look unnatural as it becomes brighter than the rest of the image so i'm going to say subject again use a linear gradient and let's just take away all of that reflection like this wonderful and all that i'm doing now is to bring up the exposure just a little bit i'm also going to bring up the whites and maybe even bring up the clarity a notch now i also want to introduce some more warmth to these green tones by increasing the temperature and let's bring up the saturation so we do have some more color in here i might expand the refine slider somewhat to target more of that green color tone but this is looking great so that's the image after the masking adjustments let me show you the difference from before the image with our basic adjustments applied to this as always masking is responsible for a huge transformation and it makes everything look so much better okay now let's do a little bit of color grading but there's really not much going on let's start in the color mixer and i want to work on the hue i do want to bring down the yellow hue just a little bit like this this will make the green tones right here in the center a little bit warmer it kind of adds a hint of fall color tones without being too overwhelming i'm going to bring down the green hue for the same reason just adding some kind of a different color to the image then let's go over into the saturation tab and i want to bring up yellow and i want to bring up green wonderful i don't touch i'm not going to touch the blue tones because i think this is looking pretty good as they are however i want to go into the color grading tab for some split toning and i want to target the shadows and the mid tones to improve that cold dark look that means I'm going to use the shadows first and set up the hue at a very cold color like this. And let's bring up the saturation very gently. I think this is looking pretty good. Now let's also head into the midtones. I'm going to be using the same color tone here, right around here. And again, I'm only using tiny amounts of saturation to only have a subtle hint of blue in the midtones and the shadows, just like this. That's looking perfect. Then let's also open up the calibration tab and I just want to bring up the blue primer saturation a little bit. Okay. And finally, the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings as with every other image. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. I'm raising the details all the way up. Then we are going to be using some masking. So hold on the alt key to see where the masking where the sharpening will be applied and then let's bring up the amount of sharpening done and that's the finished image now there are a few sensor spots scattered around the image so we can clean them up in lightroom let's use the remove tool with the heel brush selected we could click on visualize spots to make them more obvious and i'm just going to paint over each of these dots just like that should be fine and we have a super clean looking image so let me know what you think about this editing tutorial if you have any questions if you want to add anything write a comment and thank you so much for watching this video